absolutely like, do not make this mistake. When you get started, what is your advice? Things that you absolutely must avoid and things that you certainly must do. The the, the number one thing is, I, you know, I hear this all the time and I'm sure whoever's viewing this in the solar industry is gonna say, no, Julian, you shouldn't be saying that, but. All right. <laughs> Hey, today I'm here with Julian Todd Borden, who's a solar consultant and a fellow YouTuber. Uh, one of the things that really drew me in when I first met you, Julian, was transparency about information. Julian is a solar consultant who works for a contractor, Alltech Solar, but uh, in his own words, he's not like other guys, and that's really why I'm interviewing him today. I really see something genuine about his transparency about information, his desire to correct misinformation and get correct uh, information out that people can take advantage of. From the conversations we had earlier, it really seems like uh, this is it for you. Like you found your calling. You want to help people learn about solar and get started with solar. Can you tell me how, like, how did you get started? How did you find this niche for yourself? Yeah. So I, so when I, when I was in college, I got really interested in something called permaculture, which stands for permanent culture. It's the science of living sustainably on the planet. It's not just solar, it's food production and how to build communities and uh, managing watersheds and just everything. And when I got into the industry, I kind of assumed that everyone would be a little bit like me, like, passionate about helping people, going green, saving people money. And then I realized in the real world, and this was probably my, uh, you know, my, my uh, naivete, right, into the, the, the world, but it's, no, it, this industry is a bunch of contractors leveraging the consumer's lack of knowledge to just try to make money. And maybe that's how the real world is, but I, you know, envisioned myself uh, only participating in transactions that were true win-win. And I didn't see a lot of how these businesses were setting themselves up as a win for the customer. And so this is a booming industry. It's changing extremely quickly. 10 years ago, 95% of these solar companies didn't exist. And so everyone is really just trying to figure it out as they go. And the rules are being bent because we're still defining what those are. Okay. So because there's so much going on and because people, when they, when they start looking at solar, uh, it sounds like a lot of these salespeople, these contractors or uh, consultants are trained to take advantage of the naivete of these consumers. Uh, are there any like absolute, like do not make this mistake when you get started, what is your advice things that you absolutely must avoid and things that you certainly must do. The, the, the number one thing is, I, you know, I hear this all the time and I'm sure whoever's viewing this in the solar industry is going to say, no, Julian, you shouldn't be saying that. But uh, power purchase agreements, I don't care if you sell them and you make a bun bunch of money, you are nine times out of 10 not giving the customer really the best thing for them. Um, purchasing the system allows the homeowner to to gain all of the equity, to get the tax credit, have a, a relatively short loan period if they choose to have it, you know, paid off pretty soon, and uh, it doesn't lock them in. You know, I, the most common thing I hear about is someone signs up for a power purchase agreement through Sunrun or Vivint or whoever, and then three years later they're deciding that they need to move and. What happens? They were told originally that their 25 year lease agreement would easily just transfer over automatically to the next house or the next homeowner. But what happens is the real estate agents get involved, they taint the, the PPA, they tell the new buyer, uh, we're gonna make the seller pay that whole system off because they made the mistake and we don't want you to have, you know, be punished for their mistakes. So um, now we're gonna use it as a negotiating tool to not buy the house for as much or um, make them pay it off. It ends up being more expensive in 99% of cases. And I cringe when I hear people say, oh, I did a PPA, because I think I literally could have saved you twice as much money. <laughs> I was literally cringing this morning because I had a comment on that, the same video I mentioned earlier, where someone had complained about Tesla. They said like, you know, I bought this house. I had to buy this, uh, this lease, this solar lease. And I mean, they were, they were furious. They, they couldn't deal with the inconvenience that now they 25 years of this payment. Um, 
and they were actually they wanted to know if there was anything they could do to get out of it like it, what do you do if you if you've started down that route let me let me say this sunrun and vivant are both publicly traded companies publicly traded companies spend a lot of money on lawyers they wrote that contract to where you're not getting out of it I hate to say it, but it's true. All right. Well, you would be warned. <laughs> I've never seen Power anyone. I, I've never seen anyone successfully get out of of a PPA. All right. Well, I've I've watched a lot of your videos, and something that you haven't mentioned yet, but I've seen you mention this over and over again, is how highly you recommend micro inverters. And you've you've even gone so far to say that micro inverters are more important than the panels themselves. Can you please tell us what, like, what a micro inverter is and why that's so highly recommended? Yeah. So there's there's really two main electrical components to a solar system. There's the actual solar panels, which creates a direct current, and everything in your home uses an alternating current. So naturally, that has to be converted over. There's two main types of systems. Um, if you go to my website, juliansolarguide.com, uh, click on the drop down menu and click on inverter architectures, you can see these diagrams. But essentially, there's two main types of systems. There's one where there's, and this is the classic type, the, the old school type, where there's just one big box that is the central inverter and all of the DC current from the panels come down, gets in, converted in that box. The inverter is the weak link of the system, I like to say, and so if, if that central inverter goes out, the entire system is essentially out until you get it fixed. In our experience, a, quite a high percentage of these actually fail, and it's a big devastating event when that happens because the whole system is out. I prefer to use what's called a microinverter. This is uh, made by a company called Enphase, E-N-P-H, if you're a stock guy and uh, they make a product, in my opinion, far superior. Each panel gets its own little inverter. The, the performance is much better. You get more actual uh, uh, power out of the same amount of panels. Um, the warranty is twice as long, 25 years. And in reality, our real world reliability experience is incredible. I've only had a couple fail ever out of thousands of units. And so um, considering you're really never gonna have a panel fail, I've been doing this for you know several years now and I've sold over a dozen brand uh, brands of panels and I've never even had one panel ever fail the, the inverters have had more problems so um, naturally if you're looking around and you don't know anything about solar you're looking at houses and you're seeing solar panels you don't even know that the inverters under there or that it even exists probably um, you're just familiar with like what you see which is the panel but um, yeah, in reality, all of the top tier one panels are really great and um, emphasizing which panel you're getting is um, is just a, a, it's a miseducation on the subject because going with the LG or the Panasonic or the Solaria or the Q-Cell, like it's, they're all going to work great for the most part. Yeah, you know, that I definitely can relate to that experience. Um, I thought solar panels, you're buying solar panels. But man, it really directed my attention to the inverters. And, um, and I don't have micro inverters. But if I got that right, basically, if something's going to go wrong with your solar array, it's more likely going to be wrong with the inverter than the panels. And if you have micro inverters, then only one panel goes out. And if you have, uh, if you don't, then possibly you're, you, you're losing your entire array uh, because you don't have micro inverters. Yeah, and, and, and arguably the most, absolutely most important topic is to, you know, worry about the leaks that you can, you know, the, when you put a solar system up on your roof, someone's drilling a bunch of holes in your roof. If you have a panel or a microinverter go out, it's a quick warranty swap. It's probably not even going to cost you anything. But if you have a contractor come drill holes in your roof, and now you have leaks, and now you kind of picked the cheap contractor that isn't around anymore or isn't answering their phone, then that is going to take a lot of money to fix versus a quick panel replacement, which is five minutes on the roof and you get the panel for free. So 
That's really why I emphasize going with a really good contractor with a track record because at the end of the day, all of the contractors are getting the panels and the equipment from like one of three suppliers. It, it's In my opinion, this solar is not really about equipment that much anymore. As long as you're getting a good panel, microinverters, and a good contractor, you're, you're probably going to be fine. That's good. One of my favorite videos of yours was about maximizing savings through timing. And you, you called it like, it was not your clickbait video, but like, and, and when I watched it and I heard what you had to say, I mean, like the information, it's so important. And I want to give you a chance to like explain that again. When, when is the best time to buy solar panels? Right now, today. Be, it's simple. The, the, the minute you start paying, you know, you don't have to pay cash. Most people finance it, right? And so next month when you pay your electrical bill, it, instead of it being a $250 bill to SDG&E, it could be a $200 bill or a $200 payment. But the difference is that that payment is basically a forced savings account because you're just paying down equity on something that raised the value of your home. It has a 30 year, uh, legitimately a 30 year depreciation curve because the panels will last over 25 years. And so in in san diego at least the you know the roi on a solar system is going to be between four and a half and six years depending on your exact scenario and so if you spend another two years just waiting to go solar because you don't feel like it yet you've made your solar system two years worth of payments more expensive because you could have spent 24 months paying down a th you know a third of your system already and uh so after you have your system paid off, it's like a, it's like a car that you own outright, and you're just receiving. So the, I really want to make benefit. sure that this sinks in. Julian has a video about this where he pulls out a spreadsheet. He goes through the mathematics. I've done a few videos about this. I recently made a video about how long it would take to pay off my system. It's really important if you're thinking about going solar, go today. Um, so, and I'll put links to both those videos in the description below. But lastly, even though like I have enjoyed all of your content about what to do and the advice that you give, uh, at the end of the day, you're here to help people out and you're here to help sell solar. I want to give you a chance to just talk about what is it that you can offer. And actually, let me mention this, okay? I recently made a video about how long it's going to take to pay off my panels. The calculation that I came out with was 13 years. Uh, granted, that includes my... Um, Wait, did I? Shoot, I can't remember if that includes my power wall or not. But anyway, 13 years to, to pay off my does. system. Is this is this kind of a number that we want to see? Like, what do you think is ideal and what is it that you can do um, with uh, Alltech? Well, for, first off, if your payback period is 13 years, then... Um, I'm hoping that the power wall is included in that because he would have gotten majorly ripped off. Um, and I don't think that was the case because Tesla is, I mean, Tesla's goal is to bring solar to the market as inexpensively as possible. So their package is how can we make this the cheapest? So I'm assuming that that 13 year payback period included your power wall. Um, what we should be seeing as far as payback periods is around five years and the way you calculate that simply right is you just add up your your average monthly expense and you can times it by 60 months which is five years and that's not even really taking into account the increased cost each year but if you basically take your existing bill times it by 60 that's going to get you pretty close to what your net cost of the solar system will be which is after the tax credit is taken into consideration so without it you're in the the seven maybe seven to eight year range and, and about five years uh, with it. As far as pricing goes, you should be looking for something, you know, a little bit under $3 a watt, most likely. The way you calculate that is you just take the DC watt rating of the system. For example, if it's an eight kilowatt system, that's 8,000 watts. If you take 8,000 watts and you just times that by three, um, that's gonna be 24,000. So 24,000 or a little bit below would be like a market value price for what you'd be looking at. Um, and just in general, like what I feel I can provide that's 
you know, a little bit better than the average. And there are other good consultants in San Diego. You know, I, I do feel like I'm, I'm different, but there are other good ones, right? So um, basically my goal is, like you said, I, I, I'm here to help you. I want to earn your business, of course, but I want to earn it by actually giving you the right information, um, not putting you through some goofy sales process that you perceive as amateur and you know what's going on, which seems to be like what all these sales trainers want to train their reps to do. Um, I just want to have a conversation, figure out what you need, and then put together a package that makes sense and uh, make sure you're doing the best thing for you. You know, I, I really do believe that I'm going to make more money in the long run if, if I make you happy and then you send me f three people that you know you care about and trust you know me with so um that's that's my goal i've i'm a fanatic about knowing all the little tech specs and the little details and um i yeah i just i want to share what's important to you and I've, I've worked really hard to gain that knowledge in order to be able to make your solar going as easy as possible how do people reach you if they're interested in going solar the easiest way is just to email me directly or you can even text or call me and I, I pick up the phone at all hours of the day. So it's 760-473-5878 if it's a direct number and or if you want to reach me directly and uh, my, my email is julian, J-U-L-I-A-N, at alltechsolarusa.com. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'd like you to know that this video is not being sponsored by Julian's contracting firm, that Julian and I genuinely met on a YouTube thread and decided to do this collaborative project together. If you've enjoyed it and if you're interested in installing solar, then go ahead and reach out to him. He would love that and you'll find that he's the real deal. But um, there is no like partnership or link or anything like that. So if you'd like to support this channel, uh, I put some links in the description and uh, one of those things that he mentioned in the video is in-face stock. Now, I've been invested in in-face stock myself for about a year now, and I'm already up 150%. So if that's something that was exciting to you, if you'd like to look into that, and you're not already on Robinhood, uh, one of the things that I put in the description is a link to my Robinhood referral, which can help you get started easily to start investing with commission-free trades. Um, but otherwise, if you just like the video, subscribe, and maybe even share it on social media, that would be great. Because ultimately, if we can just make solar more accessible, make it more affordable for people, that's our ultimate goal. And uh, as you know, if you've been watching this channel, I just am very eager to correct any mistakes that I've ever made. And when more information is available, I love to investigate it. So that's what we're all about here on Never Been Better. A channel about innovation. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Take care.